Hi, I'm Oliver Fritchard from Cranfield University. I just want to say thank you for taking the time today to listen to this 3D visual walkthrough of the landscape of the Fen Edge around the Ely area of Cambridgeshire. In particular, I'll discuss both the location of the Fen Edge, the distribution of the bedrock and superficial geological deposits, as well as some of the more subtle geomorphical la landforms present in the area. This video has been produced using the 3D visualization software GeoVisionary. Into this, we have imported a digital terrain model based upon the 1 meter resolution LiDAR, which has been sourced from the Environment Agency. Over this topographic layer, we can then drape a series of geospatial layers. For example, in, in the picture before you, you'll see the Ordnance Survey base mapping. And as we fly through the landscape, you will notice the topographic islands which surround the Ely area and stretch out into the Fenlands. Here we can see that the junction between the more greener areas and the yellow areas is representative of that of the Fen Edge, uh, what we consider to be between the 5 and 10 metre contours. The Fens themselves are clearly identified by the ordered and straight drainage ditches that are revealed by the OS map. And the high resolution of the LiDAR um, that is shown here is also demonstrated by the tram lines identified in some of the field systems towards the centre of the screen now. Geovisionary itself contains some terrain analysis tools. Here we show the use of the terrain measurement and profile tool to look at the topographic relationship between the islands of the fens and the fen basin. And the resultant terrain profile that is shown displays the gently sloping terrain that ranges from 36 metres above ordnance datum or above sea level at the highest point down to 2.1 metres above sea level towards the drained area of the fenlands. Now we're heading over the area of Bury Hill and we can now fade in the British Geological Survey's 1 to 50,000 scale digital geology map. Um, what we see here, just to point out that the white area in the centre um, is representative of there being no superficial geology present in the area. So we see the sand and gravel pit in the foreground which suggests um, the likely superficial geology of the area before we actually even decide to put any labels on this. However, this does seem to be odds with the geological mapping, uh, which suggests that there's till in the area, uh, and that sand and gravel is more to the uh, centre right of the screen. Once again, we employ the terrain measurement and profile tool to give us analysis of the Fenland Basin in this area. Moving on, the solid geology layer that we've now turned on shows the distribution of these deposits. Uh, once again, this is derived from the, the British Geological Survey's 1 to 50,000 scale mapping. And this includes both the Amp Till and the Kimmeridge clays. Now move across some of the other Fenland areas and we can see once again the, the small topographical islands that, that are situated within the fens and then the drained fenland systems. It's quite interesting to see that the superficial geology doesn't doesn't appear to be situated on many of the topographical islands, suggesting that these are uh, exposures of um, underlying underlying solid deposits. We use LiDAR because its high resolution is able to better recognise the inherently subtle features of the Fenland landscape. For example, here at Fodder Fen, a dendritic network of buried channels or roddens are present. However, this is not e easily recognisable at first. But if we once again uh, employ the terrain measurement tool, uh, we can actually see the subtlety here of the, the cross-sectional heights.
If we once again fade up the superficial geology layer, we can see some dendritic or tree root like deposits represented by the purpley blue colour on the screen. These represent relic river channels associated with the River Great Ooze, which has been subsequently diverted and canalised using earth banks. Across this area, we see a patchwork of relic channels, um, some more prominent than others. It is the wasting away of the peat soils in this area from drainage and agricultural practice that have subsequently left these channels raised above the present day ground surface. These ch channels can often be seen in the fields as you drive by because their soils are, are lighter than the highly organic peat soils that surround them. If we now focus on one of these channels, um, which is situated between the zero meter contours as shown by the screen, using the pro terrain profile tool we can see the subtle and only 50 centimetre height difference of this channel compared to that of the surrounding surrounding landscape. So if we now head back south towards Ely, we approach the canalised section of the River Great Ooze, uh, which is its present course. We also see in the centre of the screen now another aptly named Clayway Drove. If we turn back on the bedrock geology layer, we can actually quite clearly see the Isle of Ely represented by the, the yellow coloured deposits. These are the, the woven sands formation and then the purple surrounding is the Kimmeridge clay. Coming into the foreground now is the Roswell Pits. And once again we turn back on the superficial layer and we can see some till deposits which overlie the top of the Roswell pits uh, and form some of that, the landscape of the Ely town centre. So geovisionary can also be used to, to import um, Google SketchUp models from, from their software Google Earth. Um, here I've imported a model of Ely Cathedral but similarly, we could import other models, for example, wind turbines to look at the environmental impact of such structures, or even buildings, any 3D model really. Um, in this case, the cathedral has been used to provide some perspective and familiarisation with the area. And we can also see the Cherry Hill Mott and Bailey revealed by the LiDAR data in the foreground. If we also undertake another terrain profile analysis, stretching from the top of uh, Ely down to the Fend Again, we can quite clearly see uh, the, the, the fen edge represented here. So we've got from the top of Ely at 14, just over 14 metres above sea level, down to the fenlands, which are actually at this point below below sea level at uh, just over half a metre below. We can also quite clearly see the uh, levees of the, and the course of the Great River Ouse and also the railway embankment that's present around by the marina in the centre of the screen. Once again, we have another reference to the, the brick making that's taken place throughout much of the Fenlands, um, and we can see the, the aptly named here Brick Kiln Farm. Here we move into what is known as Grunty Fen. Um, this is um, almost an embayment of uh, fen that is surrounded by the topographical highs of Ely and some of the surrounding islands. It has a range of superficial deposits including sand and gravel deposits and till indicating it's, it's been subjected to glacial activity in the past. We now move back towards Bury Hill again where our journey began and again here we're flying along the f between the 5 and 10 meter contours which actually 
suggest for representative of the fen edge and here again we just clear a quick terrain profile and we can see the subtlety of the of the height changes here And this concludes our tour. Thank you very much for listening.